hate traveling. I hate traveling on the plane so much. I'm a nervous flyer as well. And I don't think they do enough to help us nervous flyers. Safety demonstration. Can we drop that already? Why do we have to start every flight with them performing a little pantomime entitled, The Horrific Ways You Could Die on This Plane? <laughs> also, if you're going to keep it, update it. I think I speak for us all when I say, we have got the seatbelt fastening down. <laughs> we have a routine on planes, and everyone's used to the routine, so no one questions it. Well, I'm the guy who questions the routine. Finally, this is some relatable material. Air travel, we all do that. Jack Whitehall, everyman comedian. <laughs> relatable. <laughs> so, I'm in my flatbed on the top deck. <laughs> Doing something that we've all done loads of times before on the plane. Drinking a glass of champagne. No, 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 no. <laughs> Lifting up the blind for takeoff and landing. And for the first time ever, I decided I would ask the stewardess, why? I had to lift up the blind for takeoff and landing. It is a question that I regret asking. Because <laughs> I have fact checked her response. And this is the genuine reason on the Civil Aviation website. I said, Madam, out of interest, why do I have to lift up the blind for takeoff and landing? She looked at me. Do you know what she said? She went, Well, sir. If something were to go wrong with the engine, then you are the pilot's eyes. <laughs> I beg your f pardon? I'm not ready for that level of responsibility. And no one told me that when I purchased the ticket. I was very much under the impression that I was traveling in the capacity of passenger, not bloody co-pilot. <laughs> also, I think you may have picked the wrong guy. I'm the guy you want, keeping an eye out for engine failure. This guy is your lookout, really. <laughs> also, how does that scenario play out in your head where we two be nose diving towards the ground and I look out of the window and see smoke billowing from the engine? I'm meant to what, just amble up to the cockpit. Put my head through the door. Awfully sorry, gents. Your eyes in the back here. I don't know whether you're aware of this, but one of the wings has fallen off. You might want to buckle up. I will send someone through to show you how it's done. Thank you. <laughs> pilot's eyes. I'll be the pilot's flapping asshole, all right? I didn't want any responsibility on a plane. Like the emergency exit row seat, that one with the leg room. Does anyone take that when they fly? Oh, you're braver than me. No amount of leg room in the world is worth that level of responsibility. Because I've sat in that seat. I know what happens. She comes up to you, doesn't she? The stewardess at the beginning of the flight. She goes, sir, if we needed you to, could you open that door? And you go, yep. <laughs> and that's it. There is no training or psychological assessment. If that's an important job, which I suspect it is, I want the people to be screened. I want there to be an auditioning process. I want to meet every f on the plane and take a vote. It cannot just come down to the person that was willing to pay 15 quid more. Could you ever see the person in that seat and think, F really? I was walking onto the plane the other day. The guy in the exit row seat had spilt a milkshake all down his front. I stopped dead in my tracks. I was like, is this a wind up? This is the guy. When the takes the van at 30,000 feet, our lives are in the hands of milkshake Mike over here. He's going to open that door. The guy can't even open a bloody nest quick.